Based on the top questions I received, this one had to do with fear and a lack of confidence. In fact, I was asked things like, you know, how do you become bold to go after your dreams? Or how do you develop the mindset to believe you're capable of achieving massive wild dreams? I'm Terry Sabell Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Thanks for joining me. You know, I posted something recently on Instagram and Facebook just asking your top questions that you'd want me to answer if we just had an opportunity to sit down and talk. Well, based on the top questions I received, this one had to do with fear and a lack of confidence. In fact, I was asked things like, you know, how do you become bold to go after your dreams or how do you develop the mindset to believe you're capable of achieving massive wild dreams? How do you overcome shyness or get the boldness to go after dreams without fear and anxiety? You know, like public speaking or doing podcasts like these. In fact, one girl said, she said, I have an invisibility curse. Broke my heart when she said that because I understand. She said, I'm the one who gets forgotten for being too quiet or I try to speak up and make a suggestion and nobody hears me. She said, I want to get rid of this invisibility curse. Well, I want to help you today. In fact, I read where studies show that women tend to be less confident than men. For example, women ask for salary raises four times less often than men. And when men, and when they do ask, they ask for 30% less money than men do. Women typically don't apply for a job unless they meet 100% of the qualifications listed for the job. But men will apply if they meet 60% of the job requirements. So you can see it has to do with confidence. You know, women underestimate how well they can perform, but men typically overestimate how well they can perform. This is something I read. It said men do doubt, but they don't let their doubts stop them as frequently as women do. So let me just first say that you were born to do something great with your life. You have been created in the image and the likeness of God Almighty. You have all the potential in the world and you can change your life anytime you decide to. Now I'm speaking from experience, from someone who never felt good enough, had a deep rooted fear of rejection. I even took a psychological test that said that. <laughs> I had to completely transform my self-image and overcome fear. If you had told me that one day I would be speaking on stages to thousands of people or sharing a stage with some of my heroes, opening my own organization, I would have just cracked up and thought, maybe my sister, she's the loud, bold one, not me. But God began to take me by the hand, and lead me through strategic steps to change. So here's how I've done it, and I'm just going to share from my own personal journey. So number one, you're going to be shocked. You practice self-discipline behind the scenes. Now this may sound strange when it comes to building your confidence or overcoming fear, but the truth is, the more you keep your word with yourself, with nobody watching, the more confident you'll become. See, what you do behind the scenes, it has more significance than what you do in front of a crowd. It's all part of that preparation for where God wants to take you. See, God wants to prepare you privately before He can use you publicly. In fact, I heard Ed Milet say, self-confidence is self-trust. It's building a reputation with yourself that you keep your word to you. See, you keep the promises that you make to yourself. You know, he said, when I meet someone who has a ton of self-confidence, I don't look at someone with a big ego. He said, I look at them as someone who keeps their promises to themselves. I do the things I say I'm going to do. That's where self-confidence comes from. So someone who has a poor self-image or lacks confidence is someone who doesn't keep their promises to themselves. You know, maybe they start a diet and don't stick with it. They said they'd work out and get up at a certain time each morning, and then they don't do it. They said they'd spend time with God and it never lasts more than a few days. See, that used to be me. But when you develop a process of keeping your word or not keeping your word to yourself, that diminishes your confidence. So this is a simple but profound change that most people don't talk about. For example, if you say you're going to get up 30 minutes earlier each day to invest in yourself, do it. 
Doesn't matter if it's cold outside, it's raining, you didn't get as much sleep, you don't feel that great, do it. If you said, for example, I'm gonna eat a salad every day for lunch this week. Even if your coworkers are eating pizza or they swing through the drive-thru, you keep your word, get the salad. See, my point is, keeping your word behind the scenes builds your confidence. It's shocking. And you start this winning streak on the inside and it starts to build you up. Just by doing the things you said you were gonna do builds your reputation with yourself. So what is one promise you're gonna keep with yourself? It could be reading 20 minutes a day, starting an online course and making a powerful commitment to finish it, or never going to bed with dishes in the sink, or never leaving the house with the beds unmade. Now, why is this so important? Because you have to believe in you to be successful. And if you don't keep your word with yourself, you don't trust yourself. You don't believe in your potential. So make a list of five to 10 things you're gonna do every single day and follow through. Number two, is you speak what you desire, not what you feel about yourself. Let me just say, you are not what others say about you, but you are what you say about you. So how you talk to yourself will determine how successful you will be, period. Now that's a bold statement, but here's the thing. Your personal pep talk can help you lose weight, get good grades, achieve promotion, close sales, get along with people. It goes on and on. And see, we all have this inner voice. It's this running commentary that you have with yourself about yourself. In fact, we're all in this constant state of internal dialogue. In fact, I read where brain research has discovered that we send ourselves messages at a rate of nearly 500 words per minute. It's crazy. That's a lot of chatter going on that nobody even hears except you. But here's the thing. It's not mindless chatter. It has a way of creating its own reality. See, if you dwell on negative thoughts, it will stop you from reaching your dreams. In fact, your mind can literally talk you out of your destiny. You know, Mark Twain said, I'm always in conversation and sometimes other people are involved. (laughs) Well, the good news is you and you alone have the power on the inside to change. God will not do for you what you can't do for yourself. So Joshua 3, 4 says, It talks about how you have not passed this way before. In other words, new seasons are coming your way. New opportunities are on the horizon. New beginnings are in your future, but you have to do your part. You have to get your thinking, your internal dialogue, and your self-talk in line with God's thoughts about you. So think about it. What have you told yourself today? Are you affirming things like, I look so fat, I'll never get married, I'm so insecure, I'll never get promoted, I'll never get out of debt. If so, you'll consistently feel unqualified, too shy, incapable, unworthy, um, intimidated, less than average. I'm asking you to believe in yourself a little more. And here's the thing, with your own positive pep talk, you will literally reprogram your mind for greatness. You know, you've heard me say, do you want to know where your life is headed? Then listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Now, in 2007, I made a list of positive declarations to speak over myself every morning. And all it took was a little concentrated effort to think about what I wanted to declare and then the consistency to do it. It's amazing how a five-minute morning routine has brought drastic undeniable changes into my life. So here's a little sample of my personal pep talk. And I just want you to hear some of the things I would say and still do. I am fulfilling 100% of God's calling on my life. I confidently walk it out day by day. I dream big dreams and believe nothing is impossible to him who believes. I am highly favored with God and man. I'm brought before great men because of the gifts God has given me. I'm in God's perfect timing in everything I do. I'm confident, full of vision and discipline in every area of my life. I do what I say I'm going to do. I'm surrounded by the best, big thinkers, big dreamers, and big achievers. I go on and on. Things like I attract God-inspired ideas that produce millions of dollars. I'm healthy. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm proactive. I'm highly organized. I'm successful. You get the picture. Now, keep in mind, most of these declarations were spoken by faith because the reality was quite the opposite. But over time, 
I began to cooperate with my confessions and literally watch the changes take place. Is it a coincidence that what I'm declaring I'm experiencing? Not at all. So change your dialogue. Number three, this is a fast one, carry yourself with confidence. In other words, stand up straight. If you think highly of yourself, you hold yourself high. It's that simple. And people immediately connect good posture with being confident, capable, qualified individuals. This is something you can change overnight. And the instant result is you're going to appear and feel more confident. Number four, I can sum it up in one word, more. Do more than the average person. Now, this is an interesting little trick that works for you. It's subtle, but it matters big time. You know, I never even realized this is what was happening to me until I heard someone point it out. And it goes hand in hand with point number one. In fact, if I'm going too fast and you don't remember what point number one was, I'm going to give you my notes from today's podcast so you can read these and get it on the inside of you. But number one was about keeping your promise to yourself. Well, if you really want to kick it up a notch, do more than the average person is willing to do. Show up earlier than everyone else. Stay later than everyone else. While the average person watches four to six hours of TV a day, you don't. You turn it off and you go read for 20 minutes. While the average person listens to music on the way to work, you listen to motivational podcasts. While the average person oversleeps by 30 minutes every morning, which that's the average, you get up earlier and go spend time with God. Invest in yourself. Journal, read, exercise. See, something powerful happens when you do things that other people aren't willing to do. You start to believe you should be able to have things that other people aren't willing to have. See? All this above average work begins to shift your identity because you subconsciously begin to believe that you deserve to be rewarded in ways that others aren't because you're doing what others aren't willing to do. So do more. And number five, I'll close out pretty quick, is develop your own relationship with God. Now this has been the number one way I've not changed but transformed my confidence and my ability to face my fears and live my dreams. And of course, it ties in with point number one and point number four. Keep your promise to yourself. Make my relationship with God number one every morning and doing more than the average is willing to do to maintain that intimacy with God. For example, journaling what I hear in prayer. I used to never do that. Reading God's word, fasting at certain times when you feel like the Lord, you want to hear from him more clearly or you're believing for a breakthrough. Fast. Declare his word out of your mouth. Go to church to worship with other people. And it doesn't have to be a certain allotted time like a robot. It just needs to be consistent. It needs needs to be heartfelt. And it's a priority. God's the one who said he rewards those who diligently seek him. Of course, the word diligent means tirelessly, persevering, unwavering. In other words, no matter what you feel like, you don't miss your appointment with God. And as far as fear goes, one of my favorite verses is this. It just says, fear not, there's nothing to fear, for I am with you. See, when you get convinced through an intimate relationship with God that you have nothing to fear because God is always with you, then you can face any situation with confidence. So there you have it. You can turn your life around anytime you decide to. See, God sees something in you that you don't even see in yourself. So I believe it's time for you to get your identity in line with God's. And like I said, if you enjoyed the podcast and I went a little too fast, I want you to get my notes because I don't want you to spend another day lacking confidence, being in fear. That's why I'm making this available to you to actually download these podcast notes so you can reread them. All you got to do is click the link below or go to terry.com slash confidence. And don't forget, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if this video spoke to you, please share it with a friend. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching me. And remember, I'm cheering you on to live your dreams.